Sisi Ikal, you'll see the emotional moment when he reunited with his family. He explains what it was like to be lost in the bush for all those days. And four murders in four days, we'll tell you about the latest one that happened last night. Also, flog them. That's what the police says should be done with COVID patients partying like nobody's business. Also, Scarlet macaws, they were taken from poachers. And tonight, we'll show you how they were released into the wild in the Chiki Bowl. Plus, a woman rails at police after they smashed her fence for no reason. We've got details of these and other stories in our newscast for tonight, Tuesday, September 8, 2020. Good evening with your news. I'm Indira Krang. time to sign up for the best postpaid plans in the country because Digi has doubled the data in all their plans. Now you can get even more done, connect even more, stream even more, create even more and share even more. All on the fastest mobile network that gives you the most coverage nationwide. Now is the time to go postpaid with plans starting as low as $49 monthly. Shared plans are also available, all with unlimited talk and text. So don't wait. Hurry over to your nearest Digi store to sign up today. Enjoy double the data in all postpaid plans only with Digi. knowing she will grow up drinking the brand you have always trusted. It gives you peace of mind. Crystal water. Taste you can trust. Reach BEL at any time from anywhere for service requests or queries. Call free at 0800-BEL-CARE or 0800-235 2273. Send a text message to 235. Email belcare at bel.com.bz. Send us a Facebook message. Use our online chat at www.bel.com.bz. Or message us through WhatsApp at 600-6097. Trimming the hedges and overgrown trees. Packing food supplies. Ensuring that you have medical supplies and important documents are all part of your hurricane preparations. But what about your home insurance? An insurance policy with RFNG Insurance gives you the confidence that your home and possessions are protected when a natural disaster strikes. Include RFNG in your hurricane plans and join the thousands of Belizeans who have learned why it pays to get it right. RFNG Insurance is a roving company. Digi is now offering unlimited talk and text. 
and double the data on all plans and up to 60 gigs for the plus plan. All backed up by the fastest and largest mobile network. More work, more fun, more you. Visit your nearest Digistore today. Contraband is the illegal importation of goods such as alcohol, tobacco, foods and parts. Apart from breaking the law, smugglers are also now endangering the health of all Belizeans. They risk bringing coronavirus into Belize with their contraband. To keep COVID-19 out of Belize, everyone entering the country is screened and quarantined. But contraband smugglers are not using legal entry points and are bypassing all safety measures. And these same smugglers are moving among the population. They could be carrying the virus. By coming into the country illegally, they could cause outbreaks of COVID-19. Buying or smuggling contraband is putting yourself, your family, and the entire country at risk. Report smuggling. For SMART, call 0800-JUMPERS or 0800-BORDERS. For DIGI, 0800-SAVE-BZE. This message is brought to you by the Belize Police Department and the Belize Bank. Last night, our headline story was a happy news at Police Constable Ikao, the officer who went missing somewhere in the wilds of the Columbia Forest Reserve, had turned up alive and well. As we told you, he was sent to the Machakila Observation Post on September 2nd and arrived on the 3rd only to be told that he and eight BDF soldiers on the patrol had to turn right back around because of the approaching Hurricane Nana. Somehow, on the journey back to the evacuation point, PC Ikao became separated from the BDF soldiers and he went missing in the jungles of the Toledo district for five days. Today, he was reunited with his family and he told us that it was the sound of a search helicopter which led him back to the Machakila base. This morning, he was safely delivered to his family at the Police Training Academy in Bamopan and 7 News was there for his arrival in that same helicopter. Daniel Ortiz has that story. After being lost in the jungles of the Toledo district for five days, Police Constable Bernard Ical arrived at the Police Training Academy this morning by chopper. He was given a very warm welcome home by his wife, his children, and his superiors from the police department. Everyone was relieved to find him alive and in good health. Let me give thanks to the Almighty for having kept PC Ikal safe in the jungle for six days. And uh, as well as a special thank you to the Belizean people who are all praying for his safe return to his family. It was a trying and uh, sad time for us um, to know that while some of us were in our bed every night sleeping well, that the officer was out there in the wilderness alone. I feel grateful and thank, thank to God that I made it back alive to them. I, I see that you were emotional, a bit emotional outside. Yeah. Why? Because out there in the jungle being alone, it's very sad and it's the worst, worst day of your life. So, how did he get separated from the BDF soldiers he was patrolling with? We know that um, on Wednesday of last week, PC Ikal arrived at Machakila camp, 
having walked quite a distance. And uh, upon arrival there, they were told that they need to evacuate due to the storm that was imminent. And so they right away begin to pack to depart the OOP to head back to San Jose, Hawaii, which would be another minimum 14 hours walking. I was following the patrol and like I lose conscious of the, the patrol and then from there I got, must take the ram truck and from there I disappear and at last. A hurricane was passing over Belize around that time. Well, the weather in the jungle is no joke to say, but it was rough. Wind, rain, everything. Where did you take, where did you take shelter? My shelter, I, sometimes I took it in the jungle and in the cave. After stumbling around in the bush for several days, PC Ical's luck began to change when he heard the sounds of a helicopter flying over, no doubt in search of him. Our search continued from the day he went missing and uh, we ramped up the search party over the weekend. I personally went to Punta Gorda town and uh, assist with the coordination of the, the search. And then yesterday, myself and the minister, we decided to do a flyover um, in the, the helicopter from Astrum. And while we were doing so, I, I told the, the pilot to hover over the Garcia farm area because we believe that if it is that he was last, it could only be between Machakila and Garcia Farm because that is the area that has many different um, picados that you can easily lose your bearing. And so we did that hoovering over Garcia Farm for about 20 minutes yesterday, hoping that PC Ical would be able to see the chopper and that would be able to give him the ability to catch back his bearing and make his way out of the jungle. And uh, thankfully from what I have been briefed by PC Cal, that hoovering was that helped him yesterday to have been able to uh, regain his bearing and uh, made his way back to the Machakila camp. When I heard the helicopter, I knew he was going to one direction to Machakila. So I said, if I don't go this direction, I'm going to the wrong, wrong direction. So the best way is to head to, to that place where the chopper takes up and maybe I can find my way. Now that this officer is safe and sound, the police commissioner and the BDF commander are in discussions to avoid a repeat of the situation where a lawman is left behind in the jungle. I'm not going to point fingers at anybody at this time. Um, there are indeed some administrative issues that need to be worked out. And uh, between myself and the general, we're going to the work those out. And for the cynics who suspect that maybe PC Ical went absent without leave and that he wasn't really lost. So PC Ical, his words were, he didn't want to be extracted from the jungle. He wanted to continue his two weeks patrol. So that goes to show the type of person he is. A very brave and courageous young man. But I said to, when the message was related to me, I said no that he has been last for six days. We cannot leave him back there. His family has been worried and concerned. So it was only fitting that we brought him out so that he could reunite with his family and then reorganize himself. And then we see when he'll be deployed back to the jungle. But for now, we're going to allow him to go home with his family. Reporting for 7 News, Daniel Ortiz. PC Ical, who is a father of two, will be given a few days off to spend with his family and then he will return to his post as part of the joint patrol. He told the press today that this mishap has not discouraged him from taking on this difficult assignment. And after that bit of good news, following a particularly violent weekend, there may have been the hope of a respite. But it wasn't to be, because by 8.30 there was a shooting that led to yet another murder in Belize City, the 4th in 72 hours. Cherise Halsal reports. It happened on Whistling Duck Lane off Faber's Road Extension at 8.30 last night. The sudden and brutal murder of Ricky Miguel. Fatal gunshots that had been preceded by some street corner socializing, followed by a dispute, and then, suddenly, as many as seven gunshots into a parked car. Miguel lay dead 
while his girlfriend, Talia Westby, was injured. The shots made the target on a female who was shot in the leg and a male person who was shot multiple times to the body. The male person, both were rushed to the hospital where the male person succumbed a couple of hours later while undergoing treatment. The female at this time is in a stable condition at the hospital. This evening, we spoke via phone to his sister in Dangriga, and she told us that the revelation of her brother's death has been both unceremonious and especially tough for the family. Two individuals actually came here, two strangers came to our house, calling by our gate and giving, just giving us a number saying that, oh, um, my brother got shot last night. Um, we we're supposed to call this number. Um, we just called the number and, as I said before, we haven't gotten any official statement from the police department. Belicity Nur Dangriga. Um, we heard about everything on social media. That was the way we got to learn about his death. And while the family await a police notification, the commissioner told the press that Miguel was killed in a, quote, man issue. From what we have gathered is that this incident may have to do with some man, it's a man issue. And uh, the suspect in question is in police custody. He's a relative of one of, the, of one of the victims who was shot. So he has been caught by the police during an operation this morning. And uh, I believe that the police should be able to gather sufficient evidence to lay charges against him for a murder and attempted murder. Sir, would you, would you sh share any additional details as to what caused dispute between the persons? I said over a man, I don't know if the man is you, but over a man. And whatever the nature of that altercation, Miguel's sister remembered him this evening, not as a troublemaker, but as a jovial man who loved to dance. My brother, I could speak about him here in Dangriga. He's originally from Dangriga here. Um, he was a very jovial, loving person um, to his family, his neighbors. Um, he was very friendly. Um, we have never heard of him having any altercation here in Dangriga with anybody. His only um, his way of enjoying himself is going on stage dancing um, and so on. I cannot speak about his life in Belize City. I know nothing about his life in Belize City. I don't even know where he resides in Belize City. Sharice Halso, 7 News. Police have an own suspect for this crime. Talia Westby remains in a stable condition at the KHMH and is expected to be released tomorrow. So, for city murders in 72 hours, all since the curfew ended. Is it a suggestion that the police can't contain crime without a curfew? Well, the commissioner says it's not that. It's the fact that critical operational units were redeployed to the Columbia Forest to look for PC Ikau. And while they were away, the criminals were at play. And to them, Compal Williams waves the one stick bigger than the curfew, and that is the Southside State of Emergency. For the past week or so, we had been extremely busy trying to locate PC Ikau. And so many of our human resources that we would normally use in Belize City to be able to deal with the anti-gang operations were extracted out of Belize City and were placed in the jungle to search for PC Ical. Now that the search for Ical is over, we can now go back and concentrate our effort in Belize City to see how we can deal with the gang issue. But may I say there are certain things that is being done currently and uh, I guess some people have shown that they are not capable of living amongst people. So, you know what is going to happen, right? I say no more. Um, the state of emergency for Southside still it, um, continues, no? I said I say no more. Turning now to some very major late-breaking political news. Said Musa is retiring from electoral politics. The announcement came a few minutes ago from the PUP in a release which says, quote, earlier this evening, PUP leader Honorable John Bersenu visited the right Honorable Said Musa who continues to make remarkable progress from a stroke. 
Said Musa informed the leader that he has decided that the time has come to step aside as PUP Fort George standard bearer and make way for a young and competent leader to be selected as the PUP candidate. In a letter to the residents of Fort George, the two-time former Prime Minister states that in view of the imminent date for the next general elections, it has been agreed that the new standard bearer is to be endorsed by the national executive of the party on the recommendation of the constituency branch executive. It is a matter of great moment for Belize's political history. The Right Honorable Musa is a two-term former Prime Minister and an eight-term representative for Fort George. Mr. Musa's stroke and the presence of COVID-19 were two major factors that led the 76-year-old to step aside. More to this major development later on. And after the break, Chester says, flag those party goers who have COVID. Don't go away. Tiles, tiles, and more tiles. Benny's is having a massive tile sale. For the entire month of September, get great deals on every single tile at Benny's. Ceramic tile, porcelain tile, glass tile, stone tile, and HD tile. Also, come and see a wide selection of new arrivals featuring additional blue light specials starting at a low $1.59. It's Benny's Massive Tile Sale. Benny's Quality and Savings. Now is the time to sign up for the best postpaid plans in the country because Digi has doubled the data in all their plans. Now you can get even more done, connect even more, stream even more, create even more, and share even more. All on the fastest mobile network that gives you the most coverage nationwide. Now is the time to go postpaid with plans starting as low as $49 monthly. Shared plans are also available. All with unlimited talk and text. So don't wait. Hurry over to your nearest Digi store to sign up today. Enjoy double the data in all postpaid plans only with Digi. Price Premier Products Limited has been proudly serving Belize for many years. We aim to serve you better and are pleased to announce our new office with convenient parking at number 1728 Chetamal Street, Belize City. Here, you will find our Price Smart outlet opening on weekdays from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Be impressed with the variety of quality branded products such as Pampers, Always, Tide and Downy, Del Monte, Dak, Vigo and Alessi, Duracell, Crystal Farm Cheese, Linda Powdered Milk, Great Lakes Pork Tails, Ground Coffee, Authentic Gillette for men and women. We distribute many of the world's top and finest brands to supermarkets and stores nationwide. For authentic brands and quality products, visit us today. Price Premier Products Limited, importer and distributor of fine quality products. Belly King got your back. What do you mean? Brother, when you buy a six pack of Belly King beer, Belly King stout, or Belly King light, you could enter for winning a Belly King's weekly drawings. What are the prizes? Over 10,000 in a weekly prizes including Bellican beer, Bellican bar tabs and cash. With your purchase on a six pack, scan the QR code or visit bellican.com slash win to enter your unique six pack ID. But make sure you keep your six pack cartons for proof of purchase. Why? Bellican really got to back with the purchase at every six pack. Bellican, the beer of Belize.
Congratulations to our Belikin Got Your Back winners to date. Continue purchasing your six packs and entering your codes for a chance to win over $10,000 in weekly prizes because Belikin Got Your Back. Belikin, the beer of Belize. Ready and pumped for So you need a mobile plan that can keep up. Digi is now offering unlimited talk and text. And double the data on all plans and up to 60 gigs for the plus plan. All backed up by the fastest and largest mobile network. More work, more fun, more you. Visit your nearest Digi store today. El contrabando es importar ilegalmente productos como el alcohol, tabaco, comida y objetos. Aparte de romper la ley, los contrabandistas están poniendo ahora en riesgo la salud de los beliceños. Ellos arriesgan traer coronavirus a Belice por medio de sus contrabandos. Para mantener el COVID-19 fuera de Belice, todos los que entren al país son examinados y encuarentenados. Sin embargo, los contrabandistas no utilizan los puntos de entrada legal y se saltan todas las medidas de seguridad. Estos mismos traficantes se están moviendo entre la población. Ellos podrían tener el virus. Al entrar ilícitamente al país, esto puede provocar un brote de COVID-19. Comprar o traficar contrabando te pone a ti, a tu familia y a todo tu país en riesgo. Para números de Smart, llama al 0800-586-7377. 0800-586-7377. Y para Digi, 0800-728-3293 para reportar cualquier actividad de contrabando. Este mensaje es presentado por el Departamento de Policía de Belice y el Banco de Belice. I'm Chef Sean Quillen, and I got a nice surprise for you today. Take your cooking skills to a whole new level with Glazed Out, TNC's first ever cooking show with culinary expert, Chef Sean Quillen. Tune in every week for exciting Belizean cuisine and some of Belize's biggest names in culinary art and culture. And watch as they create unique and delicious meals that will surely excite your taste buds. Glazed Out, in the kitchen with Chef Sean. Belizean food, how oh, another level. Premiering only on TNC 10. As we've been reporting nightly, the number of COVID cases continues to climb and the total number of confirmed cases has risen exponentially since the start of August. As of last night, the Ministry of Health's total count is at 1,307 positives and there are no immediate signs that the infection curve will flatten out anytime soon. Well, police are getting ready to prosecute a group of 20 people who were allegedly engaging in an illegal party last Friday night at a home on Oliveira Street in Belize City. The cops say that three of the attendees should have been in mandatory isolation because they tested positive for COVID-19. But they were found at this illegal party and now all 20 are being held in quarantine because of their potential exposure to the virus. When we asked the police commissioner, Chester Williams, about this incident, he could hardly contain his outrage at the public health risks identified at this illegal party. Here's what he had to say on the topic today. It is just sad to see that some Belizean people continue to blame everybody for the increase in the number of COVID cases in our country. But those who are out there causing the spread fail to understand and realize that 
they are the ones to be blamed. We had received information, I think it was Friday night or Saturday night, that there was some party in the St. Martin's area. And police went to the, to the location where indeed there was a social gathering. And uh, about 20 persons were there, including eight minors. And among those persons who were at this social gathering, there were three persons who were COVID-19 positive at that gathering. Now, I, I don't understand how reckless and irresponsible one can be. You, you know that you're infected, you're, you're supposed to be in isolation, but yet you are among people socializing. And what makes the matters even worse was that some of them didn't even have a mask. Well, they'll be charged for a breach of isolation or breach of quarantine requirements because by law, once you're told to be in isolation and you breach isolation, then that is a charge. They will also be charged along with the others for engaging in an illegal social activity. So as soon as those persons are out of quarantine, because all the persons who are at that, who in, who are that social function at the time had to be placed in quarantine until the test result is out. And then the three persons who were infected were placed in mandatory isolation. So as soon as the whole situation with them is um, sorted out, then the police will lay charges against them. These are things that continue to occur, and then people begin to ask and blame this one and blame that one why the cases are going up. But these are the same type of people who are causing us to be in the position that we are in currently. And I'm sure that there are many more of these parties or social gatherings across the country. It's just that sometimes the police don't know. But I want to make an appeal to the public that whenever you see these gatherings, please report it to the police and we are going to respond. And while the commissioner was outraged at that blatant disregard for the spread, the Belizean Internet is outraged at evidence of elder abuse allegedly perpetrated by a woman from Maya Mopan. It's a viral video depicting an elderly, emaciated man struggling to enter a shed, all the while being watched by a family member. And once he's inside, she proceeds to lock him in. The video was captured by a concerned observer who posted it with a caption that says, quote, The street behind Shalpek Street in Mayamopan, Belmopan, I am appealing for the police department and human development to intervene immediately and rescue this elderly man from that lady. I hope we don't say it's cultural. Elderly lives matters, end quote. We hope to have a comment from police on this matter very soon. Back in July, we told you about Guatemalan poacher Porfilio Ramirez. Ramirez was shot while attempting to poach seven juveniles, call it macaws, presumably for sale, on the exotic animal black market. Ramirez was criminally charged with aggravated assault, entering Belize illegally, wildlife poaching and illegal entrance to a protected area. And the story has a happy ending. The macaw chicks he poached were rescued and rehabilitated and now released on Sunday. Sharice Alsal has the story. The expectation of Hurricane Nana had a huge effect on Belize. People boarded up their houses, did the customary three-day grocery shop, and put quite a few plans on hold. And while that was the effect on the human population, the storm also put a stall in a very important milestone for seven scarlet macaws who were poised to make their return to the wild. And today, biologist Boris Arevalo, the man in charge of scarlet macaws in the Chiquibul, told us that after nearly three months in care, those birds had their release. The, the release these uh, was for seven chicks, and that include five of the original seven chicks that were uh, rescued from poachers in the, in the Chiquibul back in, in June, June 7th to be exact. Uh, so five of those made it throughout uh, through the whole release program, uh, plus two that we extracted from natural cavities because they required uh, veterinary care, and uh, um, they ended up with uh, the other um, uh, rescued or confiscated. 
with the chicks, so it was seven in, in total. So these chicks that we released on um, Saturday, uh, Sunday, Sunday morning, they went uh, through a process you know, of hand rearing. Then we prepare them in a in an aviary where they learn how to become more independent from from humans. They start to feed by by themselves. Uh, they start to fly. Uh, get to uh, to a stage where their flight uh, ability is uh, similar to that of wild uh, macaws, and also their perching. You know, they have to to have those, those abilities. Uh, one, the ability of feeding by themselves, uh, flight, and, and perching ability. Once we um, see that, that they are in that stage, then we prepare them for the soft release, and that is what we did on um, Sunday morning. No? So the, the release is like their graduation day. And while the macaws are technically on their own, they haven't been abandoned by the FCD. While they are in the aviary, uh, they don't have the full uh, ability to forge by themselves. So providing them with food and water after the release is critical. It just helps them adapt better and, and increases their chance of, of survival. That's why we refer to it as a soft release compared to a hard release, which will be just opening the, the gates uh, of, of the cage and have them figure out life by, them, by themselves. No? It's hard, delicate, and extremely crucial work. The lab rearing or the rehabilitation program that we have for scarlet macaws in the chicky bull uh, is the last uh, management option that we have in, in, in on, on the list now the top uh, management option for the macaws is to have them fledge from the wild that is a biomonitoring and safeguarding of scarlet macaws out in in, in the wild uh, the, when we have confiscated chicks, then we uh, rescue them and try to uh, put them back into wild uh, nests with wild parents. But uh, it, that is very difficult because of age difference, trying to find the adequate or the right nest. So uh, chicks that end up in the lab and being reared and soft release, that's the last option we, we have. But it is a very important option uh, management strategy that we are doing because if we do not do that, then most likely those macaws will end up somewhere else. You know? They could end up in, in a... In, in a um, as a pet, they could uh, end up uh, dead uh, through the, the illegal uh, trade of, of wildlife. And so every scarlet macaw that we uh, manage to put into the wild population, I think it, it's contributing uh, to the overall conservation of the species because in Belize we have around an estimated total of no more than 350 wild individuals. So if we can add one more, and in this case we added seven more, that is a huge boost to the natural uh, population. A happy ending for these macaws, but just another drop in the bucket for the conservation of a species that remains at risk. Sharice Halsell, 7 News. The Chicky Bulls Rehabilitation Program seeks volunteers annually. The average volunteer will be trained to perform biomonitoring, but the FCD is also seeking volunteers with experience in animal husbandry to help in raising confiscated chicks. Seven weeks ago, the Senate produced the finalized report from the Senate Special Select Committee. Now, you'll remember that this committee, which spent over a year in 2017, examining systemic hustling and corruption at the Immigration Department, which the Auditor General found during her audit of the period between 2011 and 2013. This final report and its findings would have been a major feature of this evening news, but Belize, like the rest of the world, is currently in a battle to survive the coronavirus. So even though it is not exactly the priority issue at this time, the police are about to initiate a formal investigation into the Senate Committee's finding to determine if anyone can and will be criminally charged. The press asked the commissioner about the report today and here's what he had to say about a team of investigators being assembled to look into it. 
I have tasked him in terms of what he needs to do, and one was to ensure that he gets a copy of the Senate um, Select Committee's report. And the DPP have also given certain instructions in terms of what she wants us to look at, i.e. those offenses that may be able to be prosecuted on indictment that may not have been started by at this time. And so I'm sure that um, Mr. Romero have put together his team and uh, they have commenced looking at the, select, the Senate Select um, Inquiry Report. And as soon as the time is right, we're going to let the media know where we are. So is it a concern for you that so many years have passed since some of these things allegedly happened and that um, the persons, the perpetrators who you would be going after have had time to hide evidence? Well, I don't know if they'll be able to hide um, everything. I am hopeful that the investigation team will be able to find something that we'll be able to present to the DPP and then we'll see how we go from there. The commissioner also announced today that Assistant Police Commissioner Marco Vidal, the department's commander of operations, has recovered from that serious stroke he suffered several months ago. You'll remember that on July 7th, Vidal was one of the speakers at a press conference that the police held to announce the Southside state of emergency. Shortly after that conference, Vidal was admitted to the hospital due to a stroke which caused bleeding in his brain. Well, his police boss told the press this morning that his health has improved significantly to the point where he has returned to work. Let me also take the opportunity to welcome ACP Vidal back among us. Um, I know that the Belizean Society, for the most part, were also praying for his um, full and uh, quick recovery. And so God has answered our prayers. He is back with us in good spirit, ready to go. And so I want to again emphasize that prayers do move mountains. And we take a final break now, but there's still much more news ahead. We'll have an extended conversation with Indra, Indra Andruin. The Belizean actress was going from the Gales Point Lagoon to the canals of Venice, Italy. And Jules takes his first drive in a fully electric car. Don't go away. Meals are better at home with Coca-Cola. Collect two golden caps of Coca-Cola, Fanta, or Sprite 1.5 liter with the word WIN and one golden cap with the word microwave or one with the word Oster. And you can win a microwave oven or Oster pots and pans. You'll also receive a free kitchen utensil with all 1.5 liter twin pack purchases. You can collect all four utensils. Visit www.coca-cola.com. Reach BEL at any time from anywhere for service requests or queries. Call free at 0800-BEL-CARE or 0800-235-2273. Send a text message to 235. Email belcare at bel.com.bz. Send us a Facebook message. Use our online chat at www.bel.com.bz or message us through WhatsApp at 600-6097. time to sign up for the best postpaid plans in the country because Digi has double the data in all their plans. Now you can get even more done, connect even more, stream even more, create even more and share even more. All on the fastest mobile network that gives you the most coverage nationwide. Now is the time to go postpaid with plans starting as low as $49 monthly. Shared plans are also available, all with unlimited talk and text. So don't wait. Hurry over to your nearest Digi store to sign up today. Enjoy double the data in all postpaid plans only with Digi.
tiles, styles, and more tiles. Benny's is having a massive tile sale. For the entire month of September, get great deals on every single tile at Benny's. Ceramic tile, porcelain tile, glass tile, stone tile, and HD tile. Also, come and see a wide selection of new arrivals featuring additional blue light specials starting at a low $1.59. It's Benny's massive tile sale. Benny's quality and savings. Official hurricane season for the Atlantic Basin, the Atlantic Ocean, the Caribbean Sea, and the Gulf of Mexico is from June 1st to November 30th. The peak of the season is from mid-August to late October. However, the hurricanes can occur anytime in the hurricane season. These are basic steps you can take to prepare for the hurricane season. Learn about your community's emergency plans, warning signals, and evacuation routes. Know where to find emergency shelters. Inform local authorities about anyone with special needs such as the elderly or bedridden or anyone with a disability. Don't wait until the hurricane is on its way. Make plans to ensure your pet's safety. Emergency shelters cannot accept pets due to safety and sanitation requirements. Locate and secure your important documents. Post emergency phone numbers at every phone and program these into your cell phones. Make sure you have a battery-powered radio on hand for up-to-the-minute reports on weather and location, specific storm watches and warnings. Be prepared to turn off electrical power and gas in case you are asked to evacuate. Adzalan Audio and Video Production Company wants you and your family to be safe this hurricane season. Get a kit, make a plan, be informed. Brought to you by Axelot Audio and Video Production Company and this station.
She's been called the next Yalitza after another indigenous actress who made her debut in Alfonso Cuaron's Roma, another Spanish language film that became a darling for the International Film Festival circuit. But you'll be interested to know that Indira Andruin's indigenous roots are Belizean. And that's what she'll be repping tomorrow as she steps on to the red carpets of the Venice Film Festival. Sherry Salsa spoke to the budding actress via Zoom about superstition, sensuality and the role of a lifetime. She's a 21-year-old Belizean from Gales Point, Manatee. But Indira Andruin has jetted off to Venice, where she's nominated for Best Actress at the city's annual film festival. The film is called Selva Trajica, and it was filmed with the Belizean jungle as its backdrop. Still, it's a unique opportunity for a Belizean young woman, and we wondered how it all came about. How did you get this part? Okay, so um, uh, the director, Yuleni Azolius, she's from Mexico City, and she wanted to do something with Belize. She fell in love when she visited Belize, um, and so they were looking for like this young Creole girl, brown skin, um, and who would love to shoot in, in the jungle. And I was like, well, that's me because I'm Creole. I grew up in a Creole village and I've always been like connected to nature. At the time that I found out, I was in Gales Point, which is a Creole village that I was born in. And I was visiting my dad and my mom called me and she's like, oh, I just saw this, um, this advertisement on Facebook. Um, they're looking for this actress and, I think you could fit the part. And I was just like, whoa, like I never thought about acting before. So it was just so cool when my mom told me about that. So that's how I found out. <laughs> and my mom sent in some pictures that I had taken from like my modeling days in the jungle. A few artists lately have started to mix our mythology in with the stories that they want to tell. And I know that this film uh, has that element of Ixtaba in it. So tell me a little bit about the mythology behind the film. So yes, the, the movie is inspired by the Ixtaba. Agnes is this Ixtaba and um, she's this Creole girl that goes into the jungle with her sister and running away from this man that Agnes doesn't want to marry. And it's based in the 1920s when the gum industry was huge and booming. And <clears throat> Um, Agnes is like this young, very innocent girl, but as she gradually progresses in the movie, you see this Ishtabai quality come out when she's surrounded by all these men in the jungle and um, she becomes very, very like seductive and alluring. Um, all these mystical things happen in the presence of Agnes, who is the Ishtabai. And you can really see the, the feminine empowerment in the movie and she uses her femininity to control these men. So it's, it's very empowering for women and it's just so cool to share it with the world. Now, I know that the mythology of the Ixtabai and the way it's described in this film, uh, there's really a sexual component to the way she carries herself. What was it like to portray that? Mm -hmm. Um, at first, I remember in the auditions, Yuleni told me, I mean, pretend that guy over there is like, you're going to seduce him and I'm the Ishabai. And it was really weird at first, but um, after a little while, they were like coaching us and telling us how to really get into character. And eventually, like I fell in love with, it was cool to play somebody who I wouldn't usually be in real life. Like it was good to step in their shoes and to see like, <laughs> just another experience, so it was fun. Director Yuleni Olaisola is known for highlighting indigenous cultures while working in challenging terrain. And in this, her fifth film, she's portrayed the Belizean jungle as its own singular world embedded with mystical qualities. I think it's so brave of her and like to go into the jungle. We had such a huge, huge cast and we were literally in the heart of the jungle and it took control so many people behind the scenes, um, not only her and she's not used to the environment. It was just something very brave of her and to get to know um, somebody else's culture and try to bring it out and show it to the world. 
it's very inspiring. Were you the only Belizean actor in the film? No, um, actually there's a lot of other Belizean actors. Uh, there's Shantai, there's Depot from Depot Skits. There's a few others, yeah. But majority of the time filming, I was the only Belizean. Um, so it was pretty funny being among like all these Spanish speakers and some of them didn't really speak English. I know that you're embarking on this adventure to go to the Venice Film Festival. Uh, what have they told you about that experience, what you can expect? Yeah, so like I said, the Venice uh, Film Festival is like one of the biggest, it's the oldest film festival. So anybody in the movie industry is always like, it's just a blessing to be there and for me for the first time going and being a Belizean like I'm just so proud to represent Belize like everywhere we go we represent Belize and yeah just to be at the Venice Film Festival is a big big deal so I'm super grateful for this experience and an even bigger deal we heard whispers that you'd been nominated for a certain award at the film festival mm -hmm. so all the actors um, the main actors, they get nominated for the best actress in that section. And so while she is one among many in that field, for us, she's one of the very first. Cherise Halsell, 7 News. Iserva Tragica, which translates to Tragic Jungle, has also been selected for showings at film festivals in Hamburg, San Sebastian and New York. As we told you last night, there was a Sunday night murder on McKay Boulevard nearby on Jones Street. Police conducted searches this morning and they broke down Zulma Casillo's fence, she says, for no reason at all. Now, she accepts that her son, Tevin Cato, has been convicted for gang membership, but he is no longer living with her. Yet the police aren't letting up. This morning before dawn, they banged in without summons or permission. She showed us the aftermath. The police called this man at 5 o'clock. Instead of knock, because I was already up, they don't knock that the police tear that down, brother. I don't use the police call your jewels, right? Because of my son. Okay. Right? According to them, my son is a gang figure. No problem. Okay. They said the, they call you all the time. I used to that. No problem. You call, you do your job, you go. Every time the police they call here, they never find nothing here. I live here now for the past three years. Every time they call here, they don't find nothing here. I never disrespect them unless they ask for it. As usual, when they call, they don't got no respect for your brother. Right? This morning when the policeman call here, I did holler because I hear them, they pull the gate. They believe they don't care. They still rip that down, walk up all over that, come in at my house there and they be gone and not even as much as say morning. Up to now the police not tell me where they could they are this morning. Did they find anything? Nothing. And they still not say why they were here. Up to now I don't know if they could look for drugs and ammunition. I don't know who they look for. When they're done they come in, sit down, sit down, sit down, let the hell out we come on. You know? Where? When they going through the door, they're like, so, where this boat? Where they look for somebody wanted? Who that somebody? Who wanted the my house? Who the criminal, yeah? I don't get it. I don't know. So was your son here? No. My son not live here for a year and change. I'm not going to take that line down. This is too much. How much will that cost you to fix? I don't know, Jules. I want they could fix it. They don't have to give me a dime. They could acquire, do the estimate, buy where they have to buy and put it up as far as I'm concerned. Because I didn't want to start thinking that I'm hungry, kind of hungry. I want back where I work hard for put up. We the poor people. She's helping the police commissioner hear her in this news piece and come and fix a newly built fence. All over the world, environmentally friendly electric cars are the new trend, but not so in Belize. For any number of reasons, not least of them, well, no car dealer would dare sell them. Well, going against trend, Caribbean Motors has decided to do just that. 
and we took a ride in the Great Wall Aura IQ. Jules Vasquez got behind the wheels for this first spin in a fully electric car. With a top speed of 100 miles per hour, this electric car won't get left behind on the road. We took it for a test drive on the new Link Road today and found that it's great for overtaking. This is the best vehicle for overtaking. Yes. In instant power, right? Bam! Yeah. Wow, that's so impressive. A lot of fun to drive. It really is. Until, until the battery dead. <laughs> <laughs> How much is the maximum speed? I'm at 100 and... 50 kilometers, which is 146. Yes, yeah, so we, we've hit 158 with this vehicle. Really? Yes. Okay. Yeah. 158 again is 100 miles an hour. It's, yeah, 160 would be 100 miles an hour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm at 156. Yeah. So I'm doing about 90, 90 hours. That's right. Yeah. Feeling very stable, nice and smooth still. So, yeah. And while the performance did surprise, I started out very skeptical. Let's see if this drives like a car or a golf cart. Let's see, that's right, that's right. Oh, shucks, okay. This is completely pure electric. Pure electric. Wow. You're relying strictly on your electric motor and your battery system. Oh, man, that's wonderful. It sounds like a jet. Absolutely. Wow, that's great acceleration. So nice, we ended up doing it time and time again. Put it, hold on to the edge of your skirt. Awesome. Of course it is. No transmission shifts, no RPM buildup, and no gas, no oil. And under this hood, no moving parts. Just a very big lithium ion battery under the vehicle. But while you save on gas, your light bill will go up to the tune of $21 per full charge at current electricity rates. We have a 47 kilowatt battery size on this. Uh, so that brings you in and around $21 in electricity uh, to fully charge this unit. So $21 is going to take you about 400 kilometers or 250 miles. The argument can be made, we don't have the infrastructure. In terms of, we don't have charging bays readily available etc etc like it's not a you know it's something that you have to do at home basically for now that's right we've been working with BEL for about a year now uh -huh. and they are planning a nationwide charging infrastructure okay. uh, to be able to charge these and while we wouldn't hold our breath waiting on BEL since the Prime Minister announced the utilities pioneering of electric cars a whole year ago and nothing's happened for Caribbean Motors the future is now. We're hoping that this is the pioneer electric vehicle in Belize. And what we're doing right now is we've brought in these two models and we're showing it off to guys like you. And we want to take pre-orders. I think all people need to do is drive one and, and feel it. Uh, I, I've even seen the change in your attitude on it from the time you walked in to the time we hopped out of that car. Of course, it's a nice ride, but it ain't cheap. So what's the starting point for me? So this one, full taxes and duty paid, is going for 74000 On a cost-benefit analysis, would you say that over the life of this vehicle, which you hope is at least 10 to 15 years, on the life of this vehicle, that I will spend less money than I would have on a conventional fuel or diesel engine? No doubt. No doubt you'll save money. And while I won't be the first in line to pay that price, my interest was piqued. It's eco-friendly, it's fuel savings, but it's a lot of fun to drive at the same time, isn't it? Yeah, it's a lot. I love it. There's your, there's your jet engine sound, Jules. I love it. I love it. I love it. <laughs> As you heard, the Aura IQ sells for $74,000, while the slightly less impressive Aura R1 sells for about $20,000 less. The company hopes that if duty exemptions are granted for these environmentally friendly vehicles, the price can go down by as much as $20,000. Tomorrow night, the official September celebrations calendar continues with the ninth Bram normally. It would have been one of those grand music concerts with a lot of partying to bring in September 10th. But due to COVID-19, this part of the month-long patriotic festivities will have to be another virtual event where you're encouraged to tune in on television or Facebook and enjoy it from the comfort of your home. 
This evening, we got a chance to speak with one of the organizers about what to expect with this year's Brown. Because of um, COVID-19, you know, um, we can't go nowhere. And basically, on night night, we would have been at a concert, you know, at a party, in the nightclubs. But based on COVID-19, um, we had to do it virtually. Everything now is virtually. And hence the reason niche um, and the uh, National Celebrations Committee um, decided that um, we have to go virtual, you know. It's a pre-recorded um, event whereby I went to um, Orange Walk, I went to Dangriga, and I uh, here in Belize City, and I recorded the artist pre-recorded, and we put one um, show together, and that is what um, will be shown on night night. No, it's a little bit over three hours. You know, you can't have tent and you can't have without Lad Raven, um, Coconut Boy. We have Kenny Gladner, the new creation band. We know normally. Channel 7 normally have everybody to jump parade behind Kenny Gladden that, that the last show on 10th day. We, we, we can't have that this year again. So we have Kenny Gladden. We have Lucy and the New Generation Band from Orange Walk. And then from South, we have Miami Martinez, Chico Ramos, Sweet Pain Band, and Mohobab Flores. So that is the lineup there. It's, it's grand. It's grand. And I think you have to make something grand. In this case, what you do, you get your drinks with your family. No invite over, over nobody, your host, no kind of problem. I got no party. So you have your family, and of course, you get your drinks, your food, you put on your, your, your tent attire, your red, white, and blue. You got your flag because they sing the tent song. You are march, some old traditional songs that they like, La Riban Bosco, No, and Bande, and all of this. So it, it, it is, it's going to be festive. And from that event, the National Celebrations Commission will be hosting the official St. George's Key Day ceremony, which will be held on the following day. Again, this event has to be another virtual celebration, but one of the organizers told us this evening that you'll still be able to enjoy the ceremony's main features. Here's that conversation. After the, after the Bram, to bring in the tent, um, you know we go into the, the next day, the tent, we go into the official ceremony for St. George's Key Day. Um, of course, that will be virtual this year as well. And as with everything that we're trying to do, we're working our uh, hardest to try to capture as best as we could, as if it would have been in real time out there at Memorial Park live, um, but we will not be at Memorial Park. We will be coming from Government House and we will have the same format as is the usual traditional format for the 10th day of September. We're hoping that it will look the same. We, we aim to have the, the speeches, the coronation, of course, which is the highlight of that ceremony is the installation of the Queen of the Bay. And then we will have some entertainment as well. It is going to be a combination of live and pre-recorded. So we will have both. And it will be live stream on the uh, EE's National Celebrations Commission Facebook page. But you will also be able to see it on the television stations as well. For those who feel that maybe the production or the event will be diminished because you can't see it in person and you don't have the same energy as having it in person and live, what would you say to Belizeans to encourage them to still participate? I would say to Belizeans that now more than ever, we need to rally behind our spirit of patriotism. We need um, to embrace this new format and not try to think about the limitations, but rather to see it as a positive, that we can still in this COVID-19 pandemic, still be able to show patriotism, still be able to have the September celebrations in a different format. About events will be streamed live on the National Celebrations Commission's Facebook page and you can also tune in live on Channel 7 and other local television stations for full coverage. A Chief Education Officer Carol Babb flipped the script on the media today by becoming the host of a roundtable discussion to the theme of 
literacy a priority in a digital world. The goal was to engage the nation's highest rated shows, the news, in a campaign of literacy. Here's a perspective from our news director, Jules Vasquez, and counterpoint from the chief. You read your note from a stone tablet. But my point is that, um, that these thug notes are a great idea of how it brings classic books to life in 20 minutes or 15 minutes. Yes, it's, it's dumbed down or it's simplified, just like Cliff Notes were. But I'm saying there are ways and approaches in which literacy or the idea of reading can be more interesting. You look at one episode of Thug Notes on the merchant of, of Venice or um, the Count of Monte Carlo, which I have watched, Monte Cristo, sorry, Monte Cristo, which I've watched both of. It brings those books, it animates those books the same way when we lived in an analog, linear world, and those books would, would bring visions to our head. That idea is dead. Because these kids have visions in their head that are so hyperactive that, you know, in our analog little, um, environments, the visions that those books animated were big, but now these kids, they've seen every animated film and every video game, and so they have hyperspace in their head already. <laughs> but what, what books have is that narrative structure that so pulls you in, and when you watch something as simple and unassuming as thug notes, and I encourage everyone to do so, has a few expletives, but that's life. So when you watch that, it animates all these stories, and, and this is an approach that has to be used, that we have to accept, that Pickney not going to pick up the Antoldon World Book. They will not pick up um, um, Tolstoy's War and Peace, or Crime and Punishment. They won't pick it up. So we have to find another way to get them in, because that time has passed. So I really um, like what I heard, especially the end part that Jules said that, I think I heard correctly, that the media is willing to partner yes. with the Ministry of Education to support and promote literacy. I, I know things are, have changed. You are right, Jules. Children don't really want to sit down and read a book anymore, like how we used to be so voracious, as you put it, Isani. They want to. They want animated um, stories, and and these stories too are online too. But young children, you can capture them early if you get them early, and you read to them, and you act out the parts, and do all kind of thing. They become engaged. They become interested. But I think you have to catch them early. That the tender age of three, four, and five, you start even before that. From their little babies, you can start to read to them, you know, but to make it exciting, you start to play the roles of the, um, the different characters. If you, I strongly believe if we get them, if we support them during early childhood, they will appreciate literacy just like all of us around this table. And as we close with another look at the biggest news of the night, a term area representative and two term prime minister, Said Musa, has denied, has decided that is to step down. The major decision comes four months after he suffered a stroke in the first week of May. And that long interval is clearly a suggestion that Musa had hoped to run once more time, but with possibly 60 days left to go before the general election. He has, for his own reasons, decided that he won't be able to or would rather not. A release from the PUP says that he informed party leader John Bersenio, quote, that he has decided that the time has come to step aside as PUP Fort George standard bearer and make way for a young and competent leader to be selected as the PUP candidate. A letter to the residents of Fort George says, quote, in view of the imminent date for the next general elections, it has been agreed that the new standard bearer is to be endorsed by the national executive of the party on the recommendation of the constituency branch executive. And the burning question in the PUP tonight is, who will that standard bearer be? The heir apparently is his son, party, and the Fort George Divisional Chairman Henry Charles Usher. 
But there are no clear indications tonight after this announcement that was anticipated months ago that just got dropped. As Musa retires for Fort George, it is considered one of the safest seats in the country. We will be following up on developments with this interest. And that's all we have for you for our newscast tonight. Thanks for watching with your news. I'm Indra Craig. Remember that. You can see a streaming video of this newscast at 7 Brought to you by Digi for the best postpaid plans in the country. Remember to wash your hands, wear a mask at all times in public, properly of course, and to keep your social distance. Do join me back here tomorrow at 6. And until then, 